Yellowstone, a new discovery having to do with the magma chambers, massive new magma pocket discovered by scientists, Royce Christine on Newspunch reports, Yellowstone National Park is already a place that holds the public's fascination as well as fear. It's a super volcano. There is the largest vol volcano on Earth living below it, and yet its unmatched beauty draws millions of visitors every year. Well, it, it says here that it's the largest. It's not the largest. It's There are other larger super volcanoes. But going on with this, well, with all of our modern technology, we may think we know everything. There is to know about Yellowstone is not true. Recently, a massive new pocket of magma, four and a half times larger than previously thought, was discovered beneath Yellowstone's beautiful exterior. So four and a half larger times larger than we thought previously. NPR reports, you might already know that a supervolcano dominates the famous park that's situated on land in Wyoming and Montana. A shallow subsurface magma chamber has been long been known, but now a second, much larger reservoir of partially molten rock has been discovered by researchers at the University of Utah. There's enough magma inside, they say, to fill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times. Couldn't you imagine? Filling the Grand Canyon more than 11 times. That's how much magma more they've discovered. Seismologists at the university publishing in the journal Science say the magma reservoir sits below the other shallower and much smaller magma chamber that is already known, but the new one is four and a half times bigger. According to Science magazine, researchers have already known about a plume that brings molten rock up to within about 37 miles from the surface that contains about 2,400 cubic miles of magma. The new finding represents the missing link between the mantle plume and the shallow magma chamber. Peter Carvelli, a geophysicist in Anchorage, Alaska, who works at the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, was quoted by science as saying, quote, for the first time, we have imagined the continuous volcanic plumbing system under volcano, under uh, the supervolcano of Yellowstone. First author, Xing Hua Huang, also a postdoctoral researcher in geology and geophysics, is quoted by a University of Utah statement as saying, that includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously, plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imagined before, and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. The statement adds, contrary to popular perception, the magma chamber and magma reservoir are not full of molten rock. Instead, the rock is hot, mostly solid and sponge-like, with pockets of molten rock within it. Huang says a new study indicates the upper magma chamber averages about 9% molten rock, consisting with earliest estimates of 5% to 15% melt, and the lower magma reservoir is about 2% melt. So there's about one quarter of a Grand Canyon worth of molten rock within the much larger volumes of either the magma chamber or the magma reservoir, postdoctoral researcher and co-author Jamie Farrell says. Science notes that the discovery should not be construed as suggesting that the chances of interruption are any higher whether or not the supervolcano goes is dependent on the emptying of the shallow chamber. And what the study does mean, however, is that the deeper chamber can replenish the smaller one and allowing for larger eruptions, yes. So, knowing that you have this additional reservoir tells you you could have a much bigger volume erupt over a relatively short time scale, says another co-author, Victor Tsai, who is a geophysicist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The last major eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano occurred 640,000 years ago. There were two other known events, 1.3 million years ago and 2.1 million years ago. While the U.S. Geological Survey Yellowstone Volcano Observatory stresses that the probability of a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption in any given year is very low, using computer models, it has studied what might happen if it did occur.
and the topic of Yellowstone super eruptions. One produces greater than a thousand cubic kilometers of volcano debris. This is from USGS, and I'll leave a link below. Generates much interest, but also occasionally confusion. The new computer models can help clarify the eruption realities and provide insight on past eruptions. USGS scientists Larry Mastin and Jacob Lowenstein, uh, National Science Foundation researcher Alexa Van Eaton, published research on where volcanic ash would fall if the Yellowstone super eruption were to occur today with present day weather patterns. The research models an eruption similar to the caldera forming event that the last eruption took place at in 640,000 years ago. Yellowstone is an obvious target for ash distribution studies as it provides an opportunity to understand very large eruptions that generate umbrella clouds which spread radially in the atmosphere and the disruption of deposits from ancient Yellowstone eruptions can be compared with the output from the computer models. So, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory constantly asks questions, how much ash would I get if Yellowstone had another super eruption? We don't know, they stated, or it depends on the winds. So they said we decided to take advantage of the ash dispersion modeling program by Larry Mastin, who works at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. He spent many years working with colleagues to develop computer models that predict ash fallout from volcanic eruptions, and he decided to try applying the new model to Yellowstone. And what about the map showing Yellowstone deposits across the U.S.? Don't they indicate where the ash will go? He says no, they show an outline of the area where ash has been found from previous big eruptions at Yellowstone. As we said, 640,000 years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago. However, they do not provide information on the original ash thickness at any particular location. One reason we don't know the thicknesses from the previous eruptions is because the ash deposits are eroded and rapidly redistributed by rain, rivers, and winds in the years following the original eruptions. The very thin deposits far away from the volcano source are not preserved at all in the geological record. Lack of reliable information left the door open to speculation and fanciful predictions of the effects of super eruptions which are easily found on the internet and results of the new study show that ash accumulation while widespread and substantial is far less than in most of these doomsday scenarios. Now what is new and significant about this study? Models have been used for decades to forecast ash fall during eruptions but only in recent years have TEFRA models like ash 3d been developed that use a 3d time changing wind field and ash spread ash across the entire continent enabling the model to to uh, uh, see what the eruptions would do these features plus the development of a method for calculating growth of an umbrella cloud have made it possible to simulate eruptions of this scale now the question was did you learn anything new of scientific interest through this modeling. They said, yes, we learned that super eruptions distribute ash in a fundamentally different pattern than smaller eruptions by creating an umbrella cloud that can push ash more than a thousand kilometers upwind. The mapped pattern of ash deposits from weaker eruptions look roughly like a fan spreading downwind from the volcano, while that from a super eruption looks more like a bullseye centered out on the volcano. Powerfully spread umbrella could mean that ash dispersal is much less affected by atmospheric winds. Now what happens geologically at Yellowstone now? Seismicity and ground deformation are within historic norms. The caldera started moving up this year after about four years of slow subsidence. Earthquakes were more abundant than in uh, recent or the past years, especially in the area of the Norris Geyser Basin. And the question is, is there any evidence that Yellowstone will erupt soon? No, Yellowstone is behaving as it has for the past 140 years, and geological evidence indicates that similar or higher rates of earthquakes, ground uplift, 
and steam explosions were experienced at Yellowstone over much of the past 10,000 years. Odds are very high that Yellowstone will be erupting free for, our, for the uh, coming centuries. If Yellowstone erupts, will it be the big one modeled in this recent article? And the answer is almost certainly not. The past 20 eruptions at Yellowstone have been lava flows with no significant amounts of ash fall outside of Yellowstone. The past 60 to 80 eruptions would have had little regional or continental impact. Question, how will you know if an eruption is beginning? The answer is Yellowstone hasn't erupted for the past 70,000 years, so it's going to take some impressive earthquakes and ground uplifts to get things started. Besides intense earthquake swarms, with many earthquakes above 4 magnitude or 5 magnitude, we expect rapid and notable uplift around the caldera, possibly tens of inches per year. Finally, rising magma will cause explosions from the boiling temperature geothermal reservoirs. Even with explosions, earthquakes and notable ground uplift, the most likely volcanic eruptions would be the type that would have minimal effect If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.